Hello everyone, welcome back to the Gears Lab for more, for more tutorials on Google Earth Engine and how it can be applied for ecosystem monitoring. My name is Sean Levick, speaking to you from Darwin, Australia. We're going to continue our tutorials using the provided example scripts within Google Earth Engine. So if you are new to Earth Engine, this is a great way of learning new skills and seeing what's possible within the Earth Engine environment. I want you to open up your Earth Engine environment by going to this address, code.earthengine.google.com. You'll be greeted with the usual interface, your map in the bottom, scripting area in the middle, and example scripts on the left hand side. So you'll have your own script saved under owner, for example. You'll have shared scripts that you have write or read access to over here. And then this little tab has a lot of different examples under it. Today we're going to have a look at the clipped composite. So just left click on there, brings up a tiny little script within the scripting um, centerpiece. And a quick reminder, this is JavaScript, the two forward slashes, any text in green indicate comments. These are notes to yourself and to others. These are not read by the processing engine. So the goal today is to create a clipped composite from an image collection. That is to, to find a, a range of different scenes, um, produce a nice homogeneous composite from them and clip them to a specified shape boundary. This particular example provided by, by Google makes use of Landsat 7 raw imagery and filters it to a date range from April to July 2000. This is the name of the image collection that it's calling up, Landsat 7, Collection 1, Tier 1. Nothing coming after that means that it's raw imagery and this is the date range that it's filtering by. This will lead to many images stacked on top of each other and we're going to reduce that using a median reducer. So we create the variable median equals collection. This is the filtered collection up here and we're going to take the median of each pixel as we drill down through the layers. What's interesting about this script is that it's calling up a feature collection. Um, it's defining a feature collection from a fusion table. This is Google's uh, shape format. It's not using KML or shapes. It's using fusion tables. You'll need to, to Google that. Um, but this allows us, in this case, this long code here identifies the, the feature, the fusion table that it's calling. And this is a table of um, state boundaries within the United States. So this allows us to filter by two states, for example, Nevada and Arizona. We're then going to create a variable clipped, which is the median uh, defined up here, clipped to the collection using the feature collection. Um, if you're interested in this clip to collection, it's always good just to search for it under docs. So if we come under docs here and I just start typing clip, you'll see we have two options. We can clip to a geometry or we can clip a collection. We're then going to display the results. We're setting the map center. We're defining some visualization parameters. Keeping in mind this is Landsat 7, so bands 3, 2, and 1 correspond to red, green, and blue. And we're going to call that, we're going to add that to the map using map add layer clipped. We're going to apply these visualization parameters and call it a clipped composite. So let's run that. We hit run and we run into our first error. CF is not defined. That should be an FC. Um, run that again and we should 
now see images popping up. There we go. And we can see that these are nicely clipped to the state boundaries of Nevada and Arizona. Now, if we wanted to, we could very quickly change these states. Say we weren't interested in Nevada and Arizona. We could change this to Colorado, for example. And let's go over here, California. Run that again. And in no time at all, we have California and Colorado popping up. Um, bear in mind all the work that's happening in the background, querying the entire Landsat archive, pulling out images that intersect with these two states and generating a median filter to produce these nice mosaics. Let's say we were interested in Landsat 8. And let's come here to the Landsat 8 Collection 1, Tier 1, Top of Atmosphere Reflectance. We click on that. Each collection has a unique image collection ID. We highlight that whole string, copy it. We can come back to our code here and paste that over. Be careful if your bracket comes down to the next line, you'll get that unclosed string warning. Just bring it back. Now, Landsat 8, let's just have another look at it. Um, date availability, 11th of April 2013. So that means we need to update this date range. We're going to change that to 2016. 2016 here, 2016 here. We'll update our notes to ourselves. In case we use this again in the future, we're now loading Landsat 8, top of atmosphere reflectance imagery, filtering it to April, July, 2016. We're gonna reduce it using the median reducer. We're gonna clip it using this feature table of states within the United States, pulling out Colorado and California. Now we're going to run into a problem down here because we've said we want to visualize bands three, two, and one. Let's try running it and see what happens. Um, important to note when we're changing image collections, like between Landsat 7 and Landsat 8, is that whilst the band one in Landsat 7 was the blue band in Landsat 8, it is actually the coastal aerosol band. So we can always come back to the collection information. If we want to make a red, green, blue composite, we need bands four, three, and two. And we run that again. But noting also that this example script made use of this gain function and I find it easier to click on inspector have a look at what the actual values are and in general for Landsat 8 top of atmosphere they're always going to be between 0 and 0 0.4 so you may just want to write here max 0 0.4 and that should help your visualization. Here we have it, a much better looking California and Colorado. Still quite a few clouds in these images. If we come in here, clouds and snow, is that snow? So look at the date range, you know, this is Northern Hemisphere, um, sort of late autumn, not autumn, early spring, get confused between southern and, he and northern hemispheres. Um, if we were to expand that to a full year, we need to make that 12, 31, we might have a better chance of getting 
cloud-free, snow-free imagery. But it's going to take a little bit longer to run. And let me actually update that. So we're looking for the whole year now. Run that one more time. And now we have a clipped composite for the whole of California, the whole of Colorado. That's the median composite. Um, one thing, uh, lastly, I'd like to show you, if you're only interested in one state, for example, we can just delete that one line. Actually, what's, what's better is just to comment it out, um, command forward slash, and let's go for a big state, something like Texas. We may be interested in a false color composite now rather than a true color composite. So I'll change my band orders. Give that a run. One other thing to note is that this map set center, this defines the latitude and longitude and the zoom level that the map automatically goes to when you hit run. So if we wanted Texas to be in the center, we'd click on inspector, click in the middle of Texas, and we'd see that that's actually minus 98, 32. So we could make this minus 98, 32. If we wanted to be zoomed in a little bit more, we'd push that to a six. And let's just run that one more time. See how we now center more closely on Texas. And in no time at all, we bring up that composite. Um, it's a pretty good technique. A uh, slightly more advanced step would be to input a cloud threshold so that we throw out scenes that have a high percentage of clouds. This median composite is a very quick and, and, and dirty way of producing a composite. Nonetheless, it can still be very useful in different situations. And we will cover the cloud filtering in a separate tutorial. So thanks for your attention. Hope you found that useful and see you next time. Cheers.